How is human flight possible? How do all those airplanes in the skies above us get there? And what keeps them up there? Let's take a few minutes to learn just how these interesting machines take flight. Understanding how airplanes fly requires us to familiarize ourselves with the forces that act on them as they slice through the air. There are four of these forces, two artificial ones designed to overcome two natural ones. These natural forces are the weight of the plane, or the force of gravity, and wind resistance, or drag, which is a form of friction exerted by different gaseous molecules in air. Surmounting these effects requires forces known as lift and thrust, each of which is delivered by a unique piece of technology found on any airplane. First, there's the heaviest, loudest, and perhaps the most familiar part of the flight experience, the engine. The airplane engine is an engineering marvel all its own. The engine that powered the famous 1903 Flyer, designed by the Wright brothers, featured a custom-built 12-horsepower gasoline engine. It was essentially a powered bike chain that drove twin propellers. Today's turbojet engines are a far cry from their predecessors, weighing up to 8,000 pounds and generating more than 30,000 horsepower. Both, however, accomplished the same job, to provide a force that thrusts airplanes forward on takeoff and once they're in the air. The sheer size and sound of today's jet engines might make it feel like they're doing all the work to get you and your fellow passengers off the ground, but that forward motion is only part of the flight equation. The upward force required to lift the plane into the air is provided by the plane's wings. Here's where the physics of flight gets a little tricky, if only because of a widely but slightly misunderstood conception of aerodynamics. Let's take a look at the cross-section of an airplane wing or airfoil in flight. You might have learned that the curved shape of an airfoil is what gives it the uncanny ability to float upward. Air first diverges at the front of the wing part of it rolling over the curved section and the rest along the straight edge. Because the distance between two points, in this case the front and back of the wing, is a straight line, air along the bottom tends to want to travel faster. So to catch up, air molecules above the wing have to travel even more quickly to meet up with the same air packet that diverged at the front of the wing. Fast moving air above creates low pressure, while slower moving air below creates higher pressure. So the overall effect is upward movement. The mechanism seems to make intuitive sense. The thing is, it's not quite right. There is no physical law that dictates that air molecules have to meet up after being carved apart by an airplane wing. But shape does play an integral part in flight. Air tends to want to move in a straight line. The curved portion of an airfoil, however, deflects air such as the same number of air molecules are smeared over a larger volume than those traveling along the bottom edge. This creates a pressure differential, low pressure above and high pressure below. And voila, that creates lift. If you need a little more convincing, try this exercise or think back to the last time you might have tried it. Stick your arm out the window of a moving car and cup your hand. You will feel the physical consequences of adding that curvature with your fingers pressed tightly together. Try creating different curvatures, both positive and negative, and you'll understand how airplane wings also make descents toward the ground possible. These forces are enough to make flight by airplane possible, and while maneuvering in the air is vastly more complicated, it's simply a matter of forcing air to pass over the wings of a plane in different ways. The technologies that enable different movements include ailerons, elevators, rudders, spoilers, and air brakes. Some wing prototypes are even designed to morph organically, like the wings of a bird or insect, allowing for even finer control over flight mechanics. 
So the next time you're at the airport or hear the roar of a plane engine overhead, take a moment to appreciate all the interesting physics, both simple and complex, that makes human air travel a marvel of modern society.